Well, good Friday evening to you. Glad to have you along here on WLA TV. Jordan King taking you through the action tonight, and it's the Lemire Le Lions visiting the WLA Vikings. And it can't get any bigger than this. I know I said that in opening of the Springs game uh, a couple of weeks ago on homecoming for the Vikings, but the Vikings are riding a three-game losing streak right now and find themselves 4-4 four and four overall, 3-3 three and three in the Flyway Conference, and in a predicament where they got to win one more game to automatically qualify for the WIAA playoffs. Tonight, they play the Lemire Lions, who've won three of their last four, but are also 4-4 four and four on the season, 3-3 three and three in the Flyway Conference, and are sitting in the same situation as the Vikings. So it's a pseudo-playoff game. Win, and you're for sure in. Lose, and you need some help. The tale of two seasons has been reflected with these two uh, squads, and it's pretty much when you played Campbell Sport, St. Mary's Springs, and Mayville on the schedule. For WLA, they started the conference season with North Fondy, Amro, and Laconia, the bottom three teams in the conference, and then subsequently played the top three, Campbell Sport, St. Mary's Springs, and Mayville, and lost all three of those games after splitting their non-conference at Kettle Moraine Lutheran and home to Chilton. 13-6 win to Chilton and a 20-13 close loss at Kettle. For the Lions, they lost three of their first four, they saw Oostburg, Campbell Sport, and St. Mary's Springs. Oostburg, of course, a non-conference game. They lost that one by a pair and then won their first game, Horicon Hustisford, 42-27. But then they saw Campbell Sport and St. Mary's Springs. Lost both of those handily, as did the Vikings. And then in the last latter half of the season, uh, saw the bottom three teams in the conference, North Fondi, Amro, and Laconia. Sprinkled in there was a 42-7 loss to Mayville. And that sets up tonight, which should be a good one, here at Viking Field. Hope you'll stay with us. We'll have starting lineups and national anthem shortly, right here on WLA-TV. Stay with us.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to Viking Field for the final regular season home game in the 2021 high school football season. Tonight, we welcome as our guests the players, coaches, parents, students, and other fans of the Lomira Lions. Lomira, you may take the field. season home game on Viking Field, the five seniors of the class of 2022 in numeric order. Number 12, Ethan Cole. Number 21, Bala Kulavert. Number 24, Tyson Lofton. Number 35, Jacob Huey. And number 78, Lucas Wigan. The Lions will be coached by Shana Brigovitz and Brian Gregory. The Vikings are coached by Kevin Lair. The WIAA requires good sportsmanship by all student athletes, coaches, and spectators at education-based interscholastic events. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Actions that demean opposing athletes, spectators, and officials will not be tolerated. Tonight's officials, John Albright, Tim Porchy, John Richards, Charles Rogers, and Anthony Smith. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor America and all those who defend our freedoms, we ask those who are able to please stand and remove your hats, place your hand over your heart for the singing of our national anthem, performed tonight by WLA freshman Riley Claveter. from Ignatian Healthcare. We would like to thank Ignatian Bone and Joint Health for providing sports medicine services for our school and this event. See your sports medicine experts at Ignatian Bone and Joint Health for all your injury needs. Tonight at halftime, we'll be honoring all parents of players and cheerleaders, freshmen through seniors. 
with two minutes left in the first half, we'll ask you all to come back down to the southwest corner near the flagpole, and Mr. Bendix will give you instructions at that time. The Lions will be receiving the opening kickoff and defending the North Goal. Well, I want to welcome you back in here this evening. Jordan King taking you through the call between the Vikings and the Lions. Lions in there, away whites, red numbers, black pants, white helmets. And the Vikings in their home blue. White numbers, got the gray trim, white pants. Gray pants for some, white pants for others. Gray helmet with the Viking logo on there. I know it's senior night and parents night, but that was a terrific rendition of the national anthem. Hope that came through all right on the stream from freshman Riley Claviter here at WLA. So the Vikes gonna kick it away. It'll be Ethan Cole and the Lions are deep to receive what is essentially a playoff game between these two teams. Win and you guarantee that you're in. Muffed return here for the Lions and the Vikings gonna storm to the ball and bring down the ball carrier after a couple of broken tackles. That was Taylor Schomburg, the freshman, 5'8", for the Lions. And we're underway here at Viking Field. Want to thank you again for joining us here on WLA TV. Again, a three game losing streak for the Vikings after they had rattled off what was a five game winning streak after losing their opening game down at Kettle Moraine Lutheran by a touchdown. And it's put them in a tough situation. They probably knew that this game was gonna be a big one between the Lions and the Vikings. Shotgun formation for the Lions in the backfield. They've had three different quarterbacks so far this season. It's a pitch to the near side. Vi Both of these teams want to run the football, and that's number 24, Logan Neitzel, the leading carrier and the leading rusher, pardon me, for the Lions. Picks up about a yard. We'll call it second and nine. We'll call it no gain, second and ten. Guess they're going to call it no gain. So we'll knock that off from... Neitzel, first carry, doesn't go for anything. And the Vikings with a good start. Ball down at the 10-yard line. And a chance here for the Vikings to try to get something going on on the defensive side of the football early on after the muffed kickoff that kind of stonewalled the Lions to a certain extent. Neitzel once again on a carry. He's going to pick up four, call it third and six. Both of these teams want to run the football. Both of them in the bottom part of the conference in terms of passing. And not a lot of that has to do with success, although they really have not been successful through the air. But neither one of these teams even wants to attempt passes if they don't have to. They can keep it on the ground. That's much preferred for both of these teams. It is number 12, by the way, Connor Steers, sophomore quarterback for the Lions that's starting this game. That's upended on the near side. Couldn't tell who knifed in there for the Vikings. It looked like it might have been Jack Cars. It wasn't. It was number 25, or 35, pardon me, Huey on the, uh, oh, they're going to give it to Cole. I thought that was Jacob Huey that knifed in there. No carry or no gain on the play for the Lions. And they're going to have to punt it away back to the Vikings. Snap taken and a big kick to the near side, although that one's angling and it's going to give good field position early on here to the Vikings. See where they end up spotting that. Should be about the 40 yard line. Not the best spot there. They're going to give it to him at the 42-yard line in plus territory. So a good start here for the Vikings. Get the three and out from the Lions and going to start in Lions territory at the plus 42. Now again, I, you build this up, and as the week goes on, you can build it up as much as you want. And I'm sure both of these teams and fan bases will have built it up as being a playoff game because you win and you guarantee you're in. There's still scenarios where you could get in. WLA feels like they might have done enough either way, but you don't want to leave that up to chance if you don't have to, and they don't if they win this game. Hand to Tyson Lofton on the inside carry from Cole, and the zone run here at the start goes for nothing. 
Lamira stacked him up in the middle and gain of nothing, so second and 10. For the Vikings, it's gonna be Ethan Cole, Tyson Lofton, might see some Bubba Kulabert on some end arounds, and then Cole Weedmeyer, who's a junior for the Vikings, wide receiver on end around type of action as well. Haven't seen the Vikings too successful through the air this season. Ethan Cole thrown for only 259 yards so far this year. He takes the snap, stumbles in the backfield, and I think he's going to lose some yards there. They're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage, which is a nice job by Cole. He lost his footing. It's a little slick out there. I was down on the field before the game, and even a half hour ago, you could tell that it was going to be a slick, slick field out there. Vikes send in. What looks to be a passing set with Weedmeyer back on the field along with Noah Gensler, the sophomore receiver. Gensler, 6'2", 165. And Gensler, the leading receiver of the 259 for the Vikings. He has 139 of the receiving yards. He's to the near side. Cole in the shotgun, drops back to pass. First pass we're gonna see this evening. On third and 10. Down the middle of the field, got a man open. And it was Bubba Kulibert who I think it was intended for. He thought it was intended for Gensler. Both of them looked at each other and let the ball drop to the turf harmlessly. That was a big chance for the Vikings. Probably should have been celebrating six after that. And we'll see what happens here on fourth and 11. First incompletion of the night. We'll say that was intended for Kulibert. And 0 for 1 for Ethan Cole. Vikes gonna line up as if they're going for it, and then Cole will drop back because he's the punter for the Vikes. Send Kulibert in motion, looked like a false start. Nothing whistled, and an uh, angling punt towards the goal line. It's going to check up, and a nice job there by Ethan Cole. Handles everything for the Viking. Never, Vikings, never leaves the field. Special teams, offense, defense. He kicks, punts, linebacker, quarterback, and that's a good one down to the five-yard line for Ethan Cole. So... If nothing else, the Vikings continuing to win the field position battle here so far this evening. And the Lions are pinned down inside their own 10 yard line once again. Both of these teams played Laconia. Really that's kind of this part of the conference. The bottom two teams certainly North Fond du Lac and Amro and then you got these three teams. That's a dangerous play as coming through the line was number 55, Peyton Backry, and Peyton almost got there for the safety. But nonetheless, Steers was able to get rid of the football. And avoid the safety. So it's going to be second and 10 after that. Don't know if they were trying to set up a screen there or what. And we got a flag here from the official on the far side, and he'll trot over, make the call. See what it was, that was an early flag, almost before the Lions were set, so I find it hard to believe this would be on them, but we'll see. You're gonna say offside. Second and five from the 10, thought that was pretty quick there to throw the flag on that, I would say, but made the call. It's hard to see all the way down at that side of the field if that's a 12 or an 18, it is a 12. This is a good option play and the best play of the night so far for the Lions. After the Vikes give them a free five yards, a pitch that time from Steers out to Logan Neitzel. And that was a nice carry. First first down for either team. That went from the 10 yard line out past the 20 and a nice pick up there. Give him 11. Back in the shotgun goes Steers. One running back to just off to his right, it's gonna be a pass play. Finds one of his tight ends out of the backfield, and that once again is Neitzel. Nice play here, and the Viking, or the Lions, pardon me, 
moving the football a little bit more efficiently here. And all of it coming off of the arm and legs, or hands and legs, should I say, of Logan Neitzel. Give him four on that one. So 15 already for Neitzel. Make it 16 yards. Correction, it's second and six. Second and six here. Two receivers to the near side, one in jet sweep motion. It's kept by the quarterback, Steers, and Steers gonna plow ahead. Couple of Vikings and Lions went flying there. Steers dove forward for about a gain of five. Yeah, we'll call it five there for the sophomore quarterback, leaves third and one. Be interesting to see what the Lions would do should they not pick this up and not lose yardage on what would you would assume would be a carry here on third and one. Is it four down territory near midfield? Good handoff here and a good dive forward, and it looks like they're gonna get the first down, yes. About four yards once again out to the 35. That's Gabe Harmon, number 22 for the Lions, and his first carry of the game goes for four. First and 10. So a nice little drive here getting put together by Lamira, helped out in part by an offsides penalty from, from the Vikings. And the Vikings, again, in a close game like this, can't afford to help out the other team. And offsides every now and again probably isn't the worst thing. Big leg pump and end around. Given there, and the pitch, and the Vikings all over it. Vikings swarming the football. It was an end around to number 11, Turner Wagner. And Wagner then pitched it back to Neitzel. Turner, Wagner pitches on the play to Gabe Harmon. Check that, it was Harmon still in the backfield. And he lost three. Second and 13. This is a nice way for the Vikings to respond after giving up a couple of first downs. Putting the Lions behind the chains and that's something you want to do with the rushing offenses. Put them in these second long scenarios, make them think about throwing the football. Shotgun snap, they are gonna throw. Looking to the near side as Steers scrambles. Now pulls the ball down. Jack Karst all over it, and Karst cuts down Steers after a gain of about a yard and a half. Call it third and 11. Jack Karst, one of the leading tacklers in the conference, second in the conference in tackles. He's just a sophomore, flies around the field, has three interceptions, a couple of forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. You remember that forced fumble on homecoming. First uh, drive of the game for Springs and Karst came screaming off the edge, forced a big fumble. Of course, that was about the only thing that went the Vikings way that game, but nonetheless, Karst having himself a nice, de nice defensive season, you'd expect him to get some all conference looks here in the flyway. Yeah, uh, one of, I think that was a lion that might've moved first, but if it wasn't, it's gonna be another offside as a Vikings. Vikes player kind of jumped across, but I think it was probably induced by a lion. We'll see what the call is. They're gonna say offsides. A couple of Viking coaches pointing their hands and in hopes that that might help. I think it was Sebi Paul here, number 61 on the near side who jumped across. So that's 10 yards of penalties for the Vi that the Vikings have given up here on this drive alone. It leads to a third and long six or seven for the Lions as we tick down under four and a half minutes here in the first quarter. Scoreless ball game. Shotgun for the Lions once again. Couple of tight ends on either side. Option play to the top side of the field. Steer's gonna pull it down and he is met abruptly by a Viking linebacker who cut him down, and that's going to be a gain of very little, if any. I think they're going to give him a yard. Yeah, give Steers a yard. So fourth and five. Penalty doesn't hurt him as of yet. We'll see what the Lions decide to do, but they do look like they're going to drop into punt formation and get a chance here for Cole Weedmeyer on a return for the Vikings. So two possessions for the Lions. 
little bit better that time. They started at their own five-yard line. It's going to finish at the 40. So 35 yards. A couple of Vikes came through. Nice job to stay away from the punter. And it's going to be downed by the Lions inside the 30, inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line, which is where the Vikes will start their next possession. So a nice, if nothing else, for the Lions, if you're a Lions fan, you say, well done switching the field, changing this field position battle just ever so slightly. Vikes started their first possession on the plus 42, this time all the way back on their own 21-yard line. Ethan Cole will trot back out there on senior night, his final game here at Viking Field. And the first of the sports lasts for Ethan Cole. And Viking fans will certainly miss all the con contributions from all these guys. Lucas Weigand in the trenches, Jacob Huey defensively, and Tyson Lofton in the backfield, Bubba Kulabert, both in the secondary and out wide. But Ethan Cole here on the hardwood and on the baseball diamond. Uh, reverse for the Vikings, and a nice play there. Their best play so far as the reverse came around to Cole Weedmeyer. And a nice first play of this possession for the Vikes to stay ahead of the change, something they were not able to do on the first possession. We'll call that a gain of six. Six or seven there for Weedmeyer. That's a gain of close to seven. It'll be second and a long three. Mr. Klukas on the PA says a long three, so I'll keep the six that I wrote down already. Weedmeyer, Lamira area guy, but playing here for the Vikings. Hand off to Lofton, and Tyson Lofton's going to dive forward. They'll give him a yard. Now it's a little bit more like three, yard line, three yards for the Vikes. And a third and three, one that you would say the Vikings should get. Third and three. And they'd probably tell you that too. Gonna tick under two minutes before this play is snapped or right around there when this play is snapped for the Vikings. Gensler to the near side. Up at the top is Noah Schumacher. Wishbone package for the Vikes. Hands off inside and I think that's Karst and I don't think he got it. Jack Karst tried to juke between a couple of Lions. Not able to do so, no gain. Fourth and three. Vikings came sprinting out of their huddle and I think probably tried to catch the Lions a little bit off guard, didn't work. Smart by the Viking, or smart by the Lions there to be awake to what the Vikings might have been trying. Ethan Cole gonna trot back. And looks like he's going to hit his second punt here of the evening. Puts a big right foot through it. And it's on the far side of the field. Gets a great Viking bounce inside the 20. Down to the 14-yard line. That's a terrific punt from Ethan Cole. And everything the Lions just did to flip the field position, Ethan Cole just returned with a huge right foot. So out of the four possessions we've seen so far today, one Three and out for the Lions, two for the Vikings. And not much offense thus far. We knew this would kind of be a, a scrappy game. A lot like Lamira had last week, 14 to eight over Laconia. The Vikings, when they played Laconia, it was 17-13. When these, when these teams are, are right, when they're playing well, they want to play a low scoring game. And that's what the Vikes did against Chilton and as I mentioned, Laconia. And same thing for the Lions, Oostberg and Laconia. A couple of close games that were all played in the teens. Here's the snap, turn, hand, and a couple of Vikings stacking up. It's Ethan Cole who just flew through a hole and stacked up the runner for the Lions. It was once again number 22, Gabe, Gabe Harmon. They're going to give him about half a yard, two. so... Second and nine, we'll give him one up here in the booth. And the Vikes run defense looks like it came to play. If you can't defend the run, you're in the wrong conference here in the flyway. A lot of these teams like to run the football. Dropping back to pass this time, over the middle, tipped! And oh, thought that might be a chance for Cole Weedmeyer just out of his reach, and it falls incomplete. 
It's going to be a third and long here for the Lions. Sometimes, you know, that's always if you are an offensive coordinator or a head coach or quarterback, you see it go off the hands of your receiver over the middle, your heart just sinks. Kind of skips a beat for a second. And you're just waiting to see that thing flutter to the turf. Lions saw that happen that time after Steer's pass was tipped by the receiver. Steer's back in the pistol formation this time. Takes the snap, comes to the near side. He's looking for a tight end, got a man. And wide open, catching the football out at the 42 is number 38, Caleb Cock, Coke. Or Cuck. One of the seniors for the Lions and the Vikings just lost track of him. And a nice play there by the Lions. That went from about the 19, 20 yard line to the 42. We're going to give him 20 yards on that. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. Tied here at zero. Win and you're in. Playoff football here at Viking Field. Hope you'll stay with us. Second quarter, straight ahead. So by far the biggest play of that first quarter was that last pass to Cuck from Steers. And it's got the Lions rolling a little bit here in what is now the second quarter. The Flyway Conference has been a lot of fun to watch this year. I know, you know, Mayville has what they have, which is a, a very nice team. That's probably underselling it a little bit. You beat Springs for a conference title, you got a great team. That's what Mayville has this season. And the Vikes jumped off once again. Hard count working for the Lions and more free yards given away by this Vikes defense. Vikings got a, that's the third time here in this, you know, first 12 minutes and one second that the Vikings have given away a free five. So put that out to the 47 yard line, first and five. And Vikes just gotta stay at home. They've done a nice job exploding off the ball and I'm sure that's something they talked about this week was that in the trenches, they were gonna have to push the Lions back and they've done that. Uh, but perhaps at a little bit of a cost, they're getting off the ball quickly. There's another, that one I think was the Lions. That was the Lions giving them back. Number 63, Zach uh, Pust moved just a little early that time, but Hey, I'll tell you what, they almost had the Vikes jumping again. So let's reset. Let's pretend neither one of those happened. We can do that, right? That way neither of them get the penalty. <laughs> Not sure that's how that worked. First and 10. Here in the start of the second quarter. Snap. Hand off up the middle and carrying a bunch of Vikings down the field was the ball carrier for the Lions once again, Gabe Harmon. Huge run from Harmon. Gabe Harmon up the middle for nine yards. Harmon's a junior. It's going to be second and one. What a tough run that time from Gabe Harmon. Harmon the fourth leading rusher for the Lions so far this season, but he looks good tonight so far early on in this one. Snap to Steers, he's just gonna keep it plunged forward, get a push from Harmon that time. Gain about four or five yards there. And it's gonna be a first down, we'll give him four. And into the Vikings territory goes the Lions.
Lamira so far has Logan Neitzel at 617. Lorenz Johnson at 426. Steers is another one of their leading rushers. Here's a wide receiver pass and it gets bobbled and dropped on the near side. That was a good looking pass, I'll tell you what, from Turner Wagoner. And Wagoner, who has played, that's his sixth attempt of, of the year. He's two for five, now two for six. He completes those after he gets it on the jet sweep. Kind of sets up downfield and launches one deep. That one probably should have been caught. Couple of big pass plays, pass opportunities for both of these teams that have gone a begging here early on in the evening. Steers takes the snap, fakes this one. Now gonna follow the running back as the lead blocker steers down the field. He's gonna get a first down. Another tough run from Connor Steers. That play started at the 46. It's gonna end up down at the 30, 16 yard gain. Just a tough running team. First and 10. The deepest we've seen Lamira so far this evening. Deepest we've seen any team this evening in the opposition's territory at the Viking 30. Steers once again in the pistol. Behind him is Gabe Harmon. Couple of tight ends to either side. They're gonna send Neitzel in motion. Give his to Neitzel, far side. Ethan Cole bounces through. And Cole able to drag down Neitzel for a loss of one. Ethan Cole came screaming through another hole that time. Latched on to Neitzel, dragged him to the turf. Second and 11. So far, Neitzel not really able to get going. He had that carry of 12. Caught one for four. And he's right, hovering right around that 20-yard mark so far for Neitzel. And... I think the Vikings would probably probably take that at, at this rate of production. Looked a little disjointed there from the Lions. It ends up with Neitzel, and Neitzel's going to be dragged down by quite a few Vikings. Didn't pick up anything on that play either. So it's going to end up being third and 11. Vikings have had a lot of success defensively, as has Lamira when they've been able to keep their opponent behind the chains. One of the keys that you would always assume playing against a team that prefers to run the football. And, and Lamira's looked more dangerous from the pass. Completed a couple passes so far, including that 20-yarder before to Cuck. But it's third and 11, and a big chance here for the Vikings, you know, to possibly get off the field. If you're the Lions, maybe four down territory, if you can pick up five or six yards here, maybe four down territory anyway. It's kind of no man's land here. But I think we have a flag. It came from the back judge. Sometimes that means delay of game. Yeah, delay of game from the Lions. So delay of game penalty will be assessed against the Lions. Gonna back them up even more. Third and 16. And now if you're the Vikings, you really have a chance to get off the field here and not get hurt by what was a very promising Lamira possession. Both of these teams trading opportunities that are being snuffed out a little bit by Costly penalties. Decent crowd here tonight. Maybe some people just want to cozy up and watch WLA TV. If that's all right, we appreciate it. And that's going to be a hold. You saw that flag coming. But a nice tackle from Ethan Cole nonetheless on Gabe Harmon. It was a screen pass to Harmon. And I don't know how much Harmon even picked up on the play. They're going to say he picked up two, so the Vikes may well decline this penalty. But there was a massive hold on the top side of the field. I couldn't see who it was from Lamira. just grabbed a handful. And by handful, I mean, oh, they're going to pick it up. Interesting. I thought that was a stonewall hold. But I'm, you know, about 40 yards away and about 30 feet up in the air. So not the best angle. Vikings, though, nice job by Cole to sling down Gabe Harmon. And chance for the Vikings 
this time successful to get off the field. Back to punt, number 80, Colin Wollersheim. And it'll be Weedmeyer, who has the only punt return so far of the season in the Flyway Conference. Nice play by the special teams of the Lions. I think they're going to down that at about the one or two yard line. A great punt from Wollersheim. Or is that Ethan Brager, maybe? Ethan Brager, yeah. 89, not 80. Ball downed at the one. So the Vikes so far have had two three and outs, and this is the worst starting field position possible, literally. I think we got a timeout here. We'll see who took it. Lamira is going to take the timeout. We'll take it with him. Scoreless, 7.39 to go here before halftime here on Parents' Night, Senior Night here at Viking Field. Stay with us. Seven thirty-nine here to go in the first half. A scoreless game so far, and man, in a defensive battle like this, you just wouldn't it be fitting for there to be a special team score? And I don't mean to say that to jinx the Vikings at all, but man, you just feel like a game like this could get decided by plays like this. Scenarios right here, where you're backed up on your own doorstep at the one-yard line. We'll see. Cole's under center, just going to plow ahead forward, try to. Give the Vikes just a little bit of breathing room if possible. We'll see what they end up marking. Mr. Klukas on the PA says a short Viking gain, so hopefully, hopefully not too short. It's going to be second down the far side of, of the chain gang that spots marks the ball has not moved. So I think we're at second and ten. That's the th fourth Viking carry that has gone for zero yards. The Vikings take their first time and now the Vikings may be sensing what a big opportunity this is. Potentially for the Lions, they're going to take a timeout as well. During the timeouts, one thing I've just noticed is, and you know, this is the case usually on these late season evenings when the fields get rather slippery and damp and, the turf comes up a little bit more easily. Had some rain here in the last 48 hours or so that's kind of softened things up. But every time after every play, Ethan Cole has come over to the sideline and either manual, you know, with his hands picking out all the dirt and grass from his cleats or getting that getting that pad down where he can wipe his cleats off and start try to get them clean again. Footing's gonna be a footing's gonna be a big deal here this evening. I've already kind of seen it in the trenches, and if you can fly off the ball, you're going to have a big advantage here with some of the lack of footing that we've been seeing from both of these teams. So the Vikings, second and ten from their own one-yard line. Got to draw up something special, and you <laughs> got to imagine that's what that, that timeout was for. Try to set something up to give yourself a chance on third down. Give yourself some breathing room, even for a punt. I know that's not very optimistic, but that's important. E. Cole under center again. Huge hole opens up, and Ethan Coles goes bursting through it. That is That might well have been a touchdown-saving tackle by the Lions player in the secondary. They're one of their safeties, number 22, once again, Gabe Harmon. 
who's had a huge day offensively so far running the football for the Lions, might have just saved six. That might have gone for 99 yards had, Car had Harmon not pulled down Cole. Cole got 11. And the Vikes now do have some breathing room. Not only that, but they got a first down. That's the first first down for the Vikings and the longest gain from scrimmage for WLA. Cole back to the backfield. He's got tight. Tyson Lofton with him back there. Cole Weedmeyer on the jet sweep. Fake from Cole. Huge hole on this near side. Couple of pancakes. Oh, they're gonna get a they're gonna get a hold. It was a pancake from a Viking blocker that they're gonna call a hold, and I think this is all coming back. There's laundry on the field, and Ethan Cole just took it for about 80 some yards. And I think the Vikings are gonna be disappointed. It was the right guard for the Vikings that pancaked the Lemire Lions player. And we'll see if they call it a hold. They're going to get a hold for the Vikings. The indication is holding against the Vikings. So that is a play that went nearly 88 yards for a touchdown. And I don't know. You'll, you have the ability to reverse it and get the replay on the YouTube stream. I don't have that. We don't have that technology up here in, in Viking Field yet, the, the instant replay up in the corner that I can take a look at. It was a physical block by the Vikings' offensive line. No, dis, no dissimilar to the one they picked up a couple minutes ago. So half the distance, they'll put it back to the seven. Should be at the six, actually, but uh, I guess they're going to say it happened at the 14-yard line. So back to the seven-yard line goes the football. And Ethan Cole's probably a little winded after running 85 yards down to the doorstep, and now he's back behind the chains. It's first and 15. Lofton, you knew that wasn't going to be Cole on the carry that time. Kind of took a little mystique out of that. And a gain of two for Tyson Lofton. It's going to be second and 13. So Cole back in the shotgun, fakes to Lofton, got a man on the far side. He throws it out there, that's Weedmeyer. Weedmeyer trying to make a couple of Lions miss, and he gets back within, ah, they're going to say just outside of the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third and eight, third and eight, third and seven, somewhere around there. Nice pickup, we'll give him six. Guess they're going to say five. They just took a step back on the chain gang, so third and eight. Man, big time game like this. And the Vikings ripped off a huge momentum changing play, especially with, with the Vikings getting the ball in the second half and just wiped off. Here's Cole once again, runs the counter, slips, tries to submarine his way under the pile. He's going to pick up nothing. It's going to have to be another punt for the Vikings. This a much better drive. And if nothing else, the stat sheet won't show this at the end of the game. But the Vikes gain momentum here on this drive. Loss of a yard, it'll be fourth and seven for the Vikings. Gained one on the play, fourth and seven. And like I said, not, not going to show up on the stat sheet. But you could kind of feel a little bit of a change in momentum. Now, a lot of that wiped out with uh, the yellow piece of laundry <laughs> laying at the laying at the 25, and I think there's still some inquisitive, we'll call it, looks down there on the sideline. Lions returner slip. That should be a block in the back, and there goes the flag. Nice coverage there by the Vikings. It was Jacob Huey, who is a special teams, well, special team specialist. He's uh, one of the best special teamers on this team, on on this Vikings team, and uh, 
no need to really block in the back there for the Lions, but they did. And it should be about 10 yards from the end of it. Ethan Cole so far has gotten some great bounces on that punt. And like, like I said earlier, Ethan Cole just means I just he can't come off the field for the Vikes. Plays Mike linebacker, quarterback, kicking, punting. I mean, it's incredible. They're going to march the Lions back another 10 yards. And so instead of starting at about their own 33, they're going to start at well, about their 23-yard line. The ball is marked at the 23-yard line of the Lions where they have first and 10. And when you got a punter like Cole who can flip the field like that, it just, if you're going to play a low scoring game, you got to have someone like, like that. It's an important position. No one thinks about the punter, especially maybe in high school football. It's just someone who can do both. But if you got a good one, it's a weapon. Cole's been that so far today. That's a false start on the near side. Back the Lions up five more yards inside their own 20 yard line. They'll be back at the 17. The legal procedure penalty will be marked off against the Lions, five yards, it'll be first and 15. So first and 15 for Steers and this Lions offense. Harmon continues to be the running back with Neitzel on this near side in kind of a tight end position. Give is to Harmon up the middle. Three Vikings meet him. One of them was Jack Karst. The other number 55, that's Peyton Backry. And then I think Oscar Bloom might have been the third. Yeah, Oscar Bloom, 6'1", 235, sophomore. This sophomore class, Oscar Bloom, Chop Simmons. You got Sebi Paul, Ethan Peterson. Size to spare on this, in the trenches for this sophomore class for the Vikings. A talented sophomore class on both the boys and the girls side of things. One that's going to be excited, exciting to watch next couple of years if you're a Vikings fan. Steers on second and 14. Hands it to Neitzel. Far side of the field, met by a couple of Vikings, and it takes a couple to knock Steers to the ground. I believe the Vikes are going to take a timeout. They will try to save some of this clock that's currently at 231. So that carry by Neitzel will give him six. Harmon got one on the play before. Six for Neitzel. Now oh, they're going to give him five now. They're getting the parents all set up for the parents' night celebration and certainly senior night as well. We don't have a, a, a proper crowd mic hooked up just yet here at Viking Field. So we're doing the best we can. Hopefully you can see some of that or hear some of that. Pardon me. The uh, golden tones of Mr. Klukas on the PA. Mr. Westfall does the Third and nine clock, nine. which has never been wrong. That's what I'm told. Clock has never shown the wrong score or down or yards to go. Here's Steers. Hands it to the near side. Harmon stripped, and the Vikes pick it up. It's picked up. It's Gensler. Gensler angling towards the sideline into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. And if the offense can't do it, the defense might as well. It was stripped by the outside linebacker. I couldn't see who that was if it was or if it was Kulabert up from his safety or cornerback position, someone on the Vikings defense got in there, stripped the ball out of Harmon's hands, and it bounced nicely into the hands 
of another cornerback, Noah Gensler, and Gensler, like he was shot out of a cannon to the corner of the end zone. Vikes lead it 6 nothing. And Harmon down on the field right now. Harmon will get back to his feet and certainly hope he's all right. He's had a, a terrific first half for these Lemire Lions. I couldn't see who it was for the Vikings who was able to get a hand in there, but defensively, if it was Jack Karst, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't bat an eye at that. He's forced a couple, of, forced at least one fumble. Recovered a fumble so far this season. You also wouldn't be shocked if it was someone like Ethan Cole. Although I think we would have recognized uh, Ethan Cole. The Ethan Cole, the kicker, the holder, number 10, Sam Lair, and as always, the deep snapper, Lucas Wyden. So that is a huge play for the Vikings. Here with 2.21 left in the first half. And the Vikings going to receive the second half kick. Ethan Cole. Going to try to tack on the extra point. Looks like the Lions are back in kind of a, a safety spot. A couple of tall players, though. They got in the middle there that might have a chance to block something. But not that one from Ethan Cole. Well, there's no doubt about what was what has been the play of the first half here. That was a huge momentum shifter. And it go, I'll harp on this. It goes back to Ethan Cole flipping the field on the punt. Cole able to punt the ball back into inside the 25-yard line, get the block in the back, or about the 35, get the block in the back, Five-yard penalty on the false start, and then all of a sudden, a couple of Vikings come screaming off the edge. One punches it free, and then Noah Gensler, 20 yards later, celebrating a touchdown. 7 nothing, And <laughs> I suppose if this game was going to have a play like that, you would expect it to come from one of these def defenses. A couple of teams that just don't score the ball very often. And, and, and the Lions are better offensively, statistically, and have been all season long than the Vikings. But uh, both of these teams would tell you they got to play good defense. They got to stop the run. They've done that tonight, have the Vikings. So Cole put his hand in the air and send one deep. Cole able to get plenty on most of these results in touchbacks a lot of times, and this one is no different. So with 2.21 to go here in the first half, the Lions will retake the field. They're going to start from their own 20 and try to get a little bit of momentum if they can before heading into the halftime intermission. So Steers takes the snap, turns, nope, going to throw it. Play action. Got me. Pit tipped. Oh, man. Jacob Huey almost picked it off, and the Vikes might have had a chance at another couple of points before the halftime intermission, but Huey not able to 
pull it in. Got tipped once again. I th yeah, I think he, as Mr. Kluke has said, it was Gensler there who got his hand on it and almost resulted in a pick for Jacob Huey. Steers back in the pistol. I believe that is Neitzel behind him. He turns, hands to Neitzel, near side. Vikings, that's Cole, through the line once again. Ethan Cole is just shot out of a cannon. And after the incompletion and the second down gain of just a yard, it'll bring up third and nine. Ticking under two minutes to go here in this first half. Vikings not going to spend their final timeout. Save that perhaps for when they have the football. See what they can do here on this third and long for the, Vi for the Lions, pardon me. Not a bad idea for the Vikings. No need to get super aggressive, save time for Lamira should a freak play happen here on third down. You give up a bunch of time and delay of game. Delay of game penalty will be a and that's got to be frustrating for the Lions. They were standing, looking at the, staring at the sideline for quite a while, and clock ran out. So after the penalty, call third and 14. Ball's back at the 16-yard line of the Lions, back inside their own 24 or 20-yard line, and all the Lions. Look down at their wrists, get the next play. Steers, checks the defense, brings a man in motion, give us up the middle tonight, so nice tackle coming up there. I believe that was Huey once again. Trying to see a number. Yeah, that's Huey. And a nice tackle from Huey. They're gonna give him six. A gain of one, timeout Viking. It'll be fourth and eight. When we resume play with a minute 21 to go. And the Vikes take a timeout. You just heard Mr. Klukas. 1.21 to go here in the first half. Final timeout of the half taken by WLA after the gain of six. Fourth and a long eight. I'm going to call it nine up here. <laughs> and a chance for the Vikes to get the football back. And who knows? Depending on the punt here, the first one was not a super long one for the Lions. Depending on what happens with the punt, perhaps an opportunity for the Vikes to even add a few more points, even if it's just a time or a, a field goal. But time's going to be of the essence for WLA when they do get the football. A team that likes to run it, you you remember. So a two-minute offense. Maybe not the strong suit, although we haven't really seen it so far this year from the Vikings. Perhaps not the strong suit. Cole Wiedmeyer, deep for the Vikings, running for the Lions, Ethan Brager. Brager last time hit a beauty. Pinned the Vikings in at their own one yard line. This is a good snap, Brager takes. And the punt is a good one. Wiedmeyer, that was a dangerous one, but he picked it up. Wiedmeyer up the sideline. Tiptoes along the sideline and brings it into Lamira territory all the way up to the plus 45 yard line. 111 and no timeouts for the Vikings to try to. Oh man, you're thinking you're going to need probably 25 at least to give yourself a chance here for Ethan Cole. Is that a flag? believe there's a flag on the play yeah there's yeah there's still a flag up on the far side you, I don't even know if you can see it in the picture right now just under the advertising logo and it just left the screen by the way you'll see the advertisers up in the corner appreciate all of them Bernhard Plumbing the sponsor of the game today for the Vikings Going to pick it up, pick up the flag. And the Vikings going to take over from the Lions' 45-yard line. And they started the play clock, but 
the ref was not in position. The Lions weren't ready either. They're going to take a timeout. That's their second timeout here of the first half. We'll take it with them. Back in 30 seconds, this is Viking football. They lead it 7 0 here on WLA TV. So the Vikings are going to come out of this Lions timeout and try to put together a little bit of a drive here. Got a minute, minute and 11 seconds to try to put themselves into field goal territory or better. And again, it's always nice when you can lean on the right foot of Ethan Cole should you not pick up anything. Three and out, you'd still trust Cole to, you know, pin them deep. They're going to take a shot here on first. Down to Weedmeyer. Weedmeyer got turned around a little bit. It was a good pass from Ethan Cole that fell incomplete inside the 10-yard line. And Weedmeyer couldn't figure out whether he should turn left or right and kind of got himself spun up like a top. It was a good route from Weedmeyer, got himself open, and just lost the ball perhaps a little bit in flight. Vikings have had some open receivers in the secondary so far this evening. Not able to hit anything as of yet. Nonetheless, they still lead it 7-0 after the big turnover. Scoop and score from Gensler. Here's Cole. Takes the snap. Once again, going to roll to the far side of the field. Left hand. Finds his man. And they're going to say incomplete bobbled for Bubba Kulibert. So third and ten upcoming for the Vikings. Kulibert, Bubba popped up. I thought he almost made her gesture like he caught it, uh, but the ref was right on it. Ran right over there and was about two yards away from him when he made the call. So it's going to leave third and ten. Like I said, you're going to leave time on the clock here, but you trust Ethan Cole to pu you know, punt the ball deep and probably – leave a chance for the Lions to just kneel on it. And they're instead of throwing, they're just going to go up the middle with Ethan Cole. Check that. That's Lofton, sorry, diving ahead. And I believe Lofton got about five on the play. He did. Ball down to the, well, that's pickup of six, actually. Fourth and four. Cole's going to. Bring it in here for a huddle, and you just wonder how aggressive can you be as the clock continues to run. And now the final timeout for Lamira. Lamira takes their final timeout of the half. And that's probably smart. The line, the if you let that continue to run, you, Vikings probably feel okay about snapping that fourth down and going for it, trying to. Maybe pick up a chunk play and finish the half out on a strong note. Now you make the Vikings think. Do you really want to go for it? And although with, you know, just better than 15 seconds on the clock, uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, I don't think you'd hate going for the the fourth down here. But the smart play, the calculated play, the play that probably leads to the most wins I don't know the high school analytics. Do they exist in the Flyway Conference? Maybe. Probably not. Analytics play probably says punt it deep here. And just get the ball to halftime. But we'll see what the Vikings do. They're going to trot back out onto the field and huddle up at 
right at midfield. And Cole's going to come to the line, as he does on every fourth down. So we haven't learned anything yet, but Cole's going to come to the line. Two receivers to either side. This looks like the Vikes are going. Yeah, snap taken by Cole. He drops back to pass. Comes to the near side. Pivots. Throws down the middle of the field. Batted away. And that was a great play by number 80, Colin Wollersheim, because Noah Gensler might be celebrating TD number two if Wollersheim didn't get his hand on that one. So Lamira, with 12.4 seconds left here in the first half, will take over at their own 39-yard line. With that amount of time left, I tend to align myself with the thinking of the WLA coaching staff there. Go for it. See if you can't really put some pressure on the Lions. You score there, you know, bite off a chunk play there, and then you get the ball after halftime. You're feeling really good. And, yeah, this is the other side of it. Lions just content to take a knee, take this thing That'll to halftime. So they'll do that. Steer's going to kneel down on it. The Lions will trot north. The Vikings will get ready for parents' night and senior night festivities here during the halftime intermission. It's 7-0. Noah Gensler on a scoop and score after the Vikings stripped Lamira in the last couple of minutes here in the first half. 7-0. And you're watching WLA Football on WLA TV. Parents Night Festivities upcoming. Stay with us. For all that you do, please come forward at this time to be recognized as your name is announced. We'll begin with football players and we'll be going freshmen on up through the senior class. Starting out with the freshman, number 79, Drew Schaefer and parents, Chris Schaefer and Marciano. Number 44, Caleb Norris, parents, Zach and Kendra Norris. Number 45, Moses Metzger and parents, Paul and Kenda Metzger. Number 15, Miles McCauley and parents, Josh and Emily McCauley. Number 18, Alex Lynch and parents, Chad and Jackie Lynch. Number 68, Sammy Lair and parents, Joel and Amy Lair. Number 16, Marcus Christensen and parents, Matt and Lisa Christensen. And number 63, Connor Carey, and parents Keith and Tiffany Carey. Now sophomores, number 75, William Simmons, and parents Tim and Paulette Simmons. Number 22, Noah Schumacher, parents Mark Schumacher and Stacy Perswell. Number 71, Vince Ravez and parents, Ursh and Arika Ravez. Number 52, Ethan Peterson and parent, Aaron Peterson. Number 61, Sebastian Paul and David.
Number 24, Tyson Lofton and parents, Terrence and Selena Lofton. Number 21, Bubba Kulibert and parents, Shad and Missy Kulibert. Number 35, Jacob Huey and parents, James and Sherry Huey. And number 12, Ethan Cole and parents, Jeff and Paula Cole. And now the cheerleaders and their parents. Starting with freshmen, Lila Keeker and parents, Pastor Matt and Gretel Keeker. Brianna Ingram and parents, Nick and Heather Austin. Kyla Gillespie and parents, Paul and Valerie Gillespie. Casey Lidke and her dad, Ken Lidke. Olivia Bright. Parents Drew and Andre Bright. Kylie Otto. And parents Jim Otto and Darcy Otto. Lauren Everts and her parents Jen and Andrew. Haley Barr.
Welcome back here, halftime, 7-0. Halftime intermission over with. The Vikings, not much to speak of offensively there in that first half. Ethan Cole had 11 yards rushing, 7 for Tyson Lofton, 5 yards passing for Ethan Cole. Not a lot to speak of for the Vikings, but the defense did enough, and they lead it 7-0. It was Noah Gensler who had the ball pop up on a Viking, or a Lion fumble rather, and he took it about 20 yards to the house. Just in case you haven't tuned into Viking WLA TV very often, you notice that we mute things during breaks because we don't want YouTube to get angry at us and take us down with all the music that we're playing in the stadium. So, hope you understand that. And we're ready to get rolling. Here's a kick that's trying to find a soft spot in the Viking return unit. It's Jacob Huey that collects it. He finds a seam, cuts up field, and is out past the 30, just short of the 35. Let's call it the 34, 30, yeah, we'll call it the 34-yard line. And the Vikes will start there, first and 10. Start the second half with decent field position. Oh, we'll move it back to the 33. In that first half, we expected a lot of good defense to be played by both of these clubs. And we expected a game that would probably be in the, either the single digits or the teens from these two. Ethan Cole in the backfield brings Cole Weedmeyer in motion. It's a little jet sweep, pitch forward. I think they count that nowadays as a pass for Ethan Cole, so that's how I'll score it. That little shovel pass, touch pass forward. It went for a yard, second and nine. Entertaining first half, I think. If you're just joining us, you see seven nothing. You don't don't turn it off just yet. Uh, this is a this is a a good game and one that I think is going to be tight all the way. Ethan Cole's alone in the backfield. Don't see this very often. Four receivers out and a tight end. Cole gets it. Going to quarterback sweep to the near side. He gets wrangled down by a pair of Lions. And he's going to pick up one out to the 40. It's going to leave a third and eight. And both of these defenses, when they've had success, have gotten the opposing offense into these third and long scenarios. And that's what we have here to start off the third quarter. Vikings going to make a substitution. The tight end on that previous play was Sebi Paul. Huge sophomore for the Vikings. He's going to be replaced by Tyson Lofton, who's back into the game. He's right behind Ethan Cole. Bring Weedmeyer in motion once again. Fake it there. Looking deep is Cole. Down the middle. Lofton gets free. Hand fighting. And no call. And a couple of Viking coaches have their hands in the air. Palms to the sky wondering... But I think that's just good defense by the Lions. Little hand fighting from both players and let them play football. I think there are a few people that are closer to the field that have differing opinions than me. Ethan Cole, back in the shotgun, I would expect him to trot back and launch this one deep. He does. He backs up about 10 yards. Good snap to Cole. He's going to put his right foot through it. It's another beauty. Fielded at the, about the 27-yard line and a couple of Vikings down there to make the play. First one was Huey. Second one, Weedmeyer and Bubba Kulibert finished off the returner for the Lions. It was number 21, Kobe Sakat. And Sakat, a sophomore returner for the Lions. And he will have the first possession for the Lions at their own 29-yard line, where they'll start it. Ten thirteen to go here in the third quarter. And Steers in the pistol once again. Bring a man in motion. Steers going to run the option out to the top with Neitzel running with him. Couple of Vikings stack up Steers near the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to maybe give him one. No, they're going to say he's stuffed for nothing. 
and it's going to bring up second and 10. He might have even lost a half a yard there. Peyton Backry found his way into the backfield. Second and 10 for the Lions. Steers once again in the pistol. Got a couple of tight ends. Wide receiver is Wollersheim here on the near side. I believe that's who that is, Colin Wollersheim. Yeah, it is. Pitch out to Neitzel. Neitzel with a couple of lead blockers. Had the tight end pulling from the opposite side. And it's Ethan Cole who gets down there to sling Neitzel to the ground. Going to say he got about seven on the play, seven or eight. Let's give him eight for Gabe Neitzel. Or no, sorry, Gabe Harmon. It's uh, Logan Neitzel. Third and two for the Lions here on their first possession of the second half. The Vikes went three and out. Had a chance. Every time the Vikings have thrown the ball, they've had chances. And they've only completed two passes so far, has Ethan Cole. That's why a box score can be a little misleading. Vikes bust through, and they're going to stack Knights up behind the line of scrimmage. Backry was involved, as was Ethan Cole. Bloom gets out of the carnage in the backfield. So does Jack Karst. Brendan Ebert was also in on the tackle. He lost at least a yard on that. It's going to be a third and a long three. Might be four. And back onto the field all too soon for the Lions is Ethan Brager, the senior punter. Brager, 6'3", 220, tight end linebacker, and does the kicking duties for the Lions. Cole Weedmeyer is back to receive. Brager, this one angles toward the near sideline. That is out. Whoa. That was out at about the 40. They're going to mark it at the 36. see where it hit on the sideline but nonetheless a 36 yard line mark which is where the Vikes will start their next possession now the yeah 36 first and 10 for the Vikes first and 10 Vikings and the difference between those punts from Cole and Brager has resulted in a net positive gain for the Vikes. Time's come off the clock. They got a first and 10. And see if they can get something rolling here. Weedmeyer in motion. Handoff from Cole to Weedmeyer. Weedmeyer goes to the near side. Huge collision there, but he gets out to about the 40 yard line. Give him a game of gain of four. Tackle by the Lions, Colin Wollersheim. Four, it'll be second, and six. second and six, it was Wollersheim in on the tackle for the Lions. And this is a little reminiscent of that Laconia game for the Vikings. Not a lot doing offensively, one that you knew you were going to have to grind out. And we'll see if they're able to do that here in this second half. Everything to the near side except for, I believe that's Bubba Kulabert up to the top. Handoff miscommunication almost looked like between Ethan Cole and Tyson Lofton. And that was a pretty friendly spot if they go with the far side official. They're going to go with the near side official to say that he lost about two of those four yards that. Third and seven for the Vikings. Weedmeyer gained on the first play, so call it third and eight. And for the second straight possess possession, the Vikes face a third and long. Just an offense so far this season that has not proved that they can deal with these kinds of distances on third down. Cole under pressure, slings one, finds Gensler over the middle. Gensler's gonna take it. It's a house call for the Vikings. Ethan Cole is down in the backfield. He gets up to see Noah Gensler celebrating in the end zone. It's 61 yards to the house. Gensler's second touchdown. He scored as a cornerback. Now he's scored as a wide receiver. It's 13-0. That's a huge play for the Vikings. And 
If that was the curse of the commentator, I'll take it every day of the week. I said the Vikings offense hasn't proven that they can handle these third and longs, and what do they do? Sling it 61 yards. Gensler got open over the middle. And if he brings it down and you don't tackle him right away, he's gone. Cole stayed down for a little bit. He took a shot, stood in the pocket, stood tall, took a hit and put it on a dime. Sam Lair will put the ball down. Cole will kick it through and the Vikes lead it 14 nothing. Well, how's that for a start to the second half for the Vikes? Looked like another three and out, but instead Ethan Cole stands in the pocket, takes a hit, and the Vikes have some breathing room. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of places, a lot of quarterbacks that you'll find that they take that hit, they get up and they get to go sit down for 10, 15 minutes while the defense takes the field, not Ethan Cole. He gets up, trots down the field, kicks the extra point, gets to go stand on the sideline for about 2.8 seconds and then heads back to kick the ball off. After that, he'll change over the, <laughs> the wrist plays and get ready to play linebacker. It's fascinating to watch. Cole hammers this one deep, and Lions are just going to let it bound through the end zone. It's a touchback. Lions will start at their own 20. It'll be first and 20. 621 left here in the third quarter. And momentum firmly, firmly now in the camp of the Winnebago Lutheran Academy Vikings. And unless the Lions can respond quickly and start to chip away at this lead, the Vikes look like they might be well on their way to punching a ticket to the postseason. Steers in the backfield, pistol formation. Turns, gives, Neitzel, cuts, up the field. And I think he's got about two or three yards there, does Logan Neitzel. Really, the the three yards there seems like a good, uh, you know, seems like a long gain for Neitzel, just based on how we've seen this Vikings defense, especially in the trenches up front, play so far tonight. It's second and seven after that gain of three from Neitzel. Steers checks his play on his wrist. Takes the snap, turn, give to Neitzel on the near side. Couple of Vikings, one of them was Bubba Kulibert, forcing him back inside. Neitzel cuts up field and gets another three. It's going to be third and four for the Lions. And this is where you want to be if you are Lamira. Getting these third and manageable type of situations. Feel like you give yourself a chance to convert. We've seen both of these offenses. And, and, call it what it is, let's credit the defenses. Both of them have done a nice job of keeping these offenses behind the chains. Not here for Lamira. Third and four. Steers raises the leg. He's got an option play. He's going to pitch it to the top. There's Ethan Cole once again. And Cole rides Lamira's Turner Wagner down to the ground. It's going to lose six. Bring up third and ten. It was pitched from Steers on the option play, and Wagner had no chance. Ethan Cole diagnosed it early. A couple of those Vikings got through. I think it was Oscar Bloom as well as number 52, Ethan Peterson, getting through, forcing the pitch that time up to Wagner. And yet again, we see the punt formation for the Lions. And a flag comes out. I believe we're going to have a false start. 
So a fourth and 10 is about to turn into a fourth and 15 from their own 15-yard line. That was a good punt that time from Ethan Brager as well. That would have flipped the field. Fourth and 15 from the 15. Cole Weedmeyer stands with his heels on the 50-yard line. Weedmeyer so far this season has been the lone player in the Flyway Conference to take any type of return. It was a punt return earlier this season. Back to the house for a touchdown. Here's Brager. Good punt, but it's a line drive one. Good coverage by the Lions. Weedmeyer picks it up. Weedmeyer tries to cut to the near side. He slips, loses his footing at about the 45, and is stumbles down to the 46. So near midfield, that's still good field position for the Vikings at their own 46-yard line. And they'll take back over on the offensive side of the ball. The only break Ethan Cole gets is to, to take his gloves off and launch him to the near side of the field. And head back out to sling the pigskin around for the Vikes. 4.08 to go here in the third quarter. Ball sits at the 46-yard line of the Vikings. Karst into the game for the Vikes. And he's going to play kind of an offset in the wishbone type of formation. Now they're going to... No, they're going to play fake here. Cole looks deep once again. He's got Gensler. Gensler went up and got it. Little underthrown that time from Cole. He had Noah Gensler. But Colin Wollersheim yet again. Wollersheim, that's either two or three. Two that I remember for sure. One, I'm not sure if it was him. Where he deflected what would have been six. They should respot that football. It's at the 46. Yeah, that the far official is going to come in. Yeah, I was going to say. Spotted at the 46. They got it sorted out down there. Could see the far side official immediately start blowing his whistle trying to get him to see it. Oh, here's Ethan Cole running out. Direct snap to Tyson Lofton. Lofton with a head of steam. Comes to the near side. Dragged down by a couple of Lions. All of that running to pick up about two or three on the play. And we'll call it third and eight. Going to tick close to three minutes after this play. And the Vikes approaching midfield, though, in third and long territory. Another third and eight. Last time they had third and eight, they threw it 61 yards for the touchdown. Here's Cole. A couple of Lions coming off the edge. Thought Cole might have put his knee on the ground. Throws it across the middle of the field. It's a little bit awkward between Gensler over through uh, Weedmeyer and short of Gensler. So it's going to be fourth and eight for the Vikings. So a couple of chances in the passing game for WLA. And, uh, you know, outside of perhaps the North Fondy or Amro game, most successful passing game of the year for the Vikes. And really, it's all come down to one play, 61 yards. And you kind of figured, like I said earlier, Gensler with so many of the receiving yards for the Vikings, part of that terrific sophomore class. You thought if, if there was going to be a big play to be made, it would be Gensler. He's made two of them. Oh, that's great coverage by Bubba Kulabert. Great punt from Cole. Caught at the 10-yard line by number 21, Kobe Sakat. And Bubba Kulabert dove around the knees and just held on for dear life. And then Jacob Huey came and finished the playoff. So from their own 10, once again, a nice punt from Cole. This is where the Lions will get going for their second possession here of the second half. Sorry, third possession of the second half. They have 
couple of three and outs so far. Diving ahead was Steers, just keeping it. I think he got three or four. We'll give him three up here. Bring up second and seven. Man, perfect football weather in Wisconsin right now. Just feels like a, you know, it feels like playoff football. Perfect if you got a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate. Man in motion here. Steers takes the pass, takes the snap. Looks to pass on the far side. This one's a little bit wide of his intended com uh, intended target, Turner Wegner. Brings up a third and six. So third and six. Steers in the pistol once again. Takes the snap, fakes. Looking deep, got a man, he gets hit when he throws. Wagner just out of, just over the outstretched arms of Wagner who gave, made the diving attempt, but oh. That was a good throw by Steers, just drifted out of bounds and another day Wagner might have had that one. Fourth and six from their own 14 yard line. And back in to punt is Ethan Brager. 2.07 to play in the third. Brager, this is a line drive. We'll see if Weedmeyer can cut it off. He can't. He's going to have a chance to pick it up. Weedmeyer looks up, decides he will pick it up, tries the far side of the field. Now just going to get north-south. Smart play by him. Gets out to the 34-yard line. That's a really smart play by Cole Weedmeyer. I know the 34 isn't great field position, but that was an awkward one. Took a good Lemire a bounce. He looked up, saw he had time, successfully and safely fielded the punt and got north-south. Got a few yards that he could. Smart play. Just saw Sam Lair, sophomore backup quarterback, trot out there. Ethan Cole's still out there, too. So Lair might be wide. Yeah, there he is, lining up as wide receiver. I picked it up here in the booth. Uh, we looking at a trick play here? We'll see. Nope, Lair's going to run a run a pattern. Cole's going to fake to Weedmeyer, dart up the field himself, and pick up, uh, we'll give him two. Bring up second and eight for the Vikings. Hey, I just wanted to be the one to point it out. I would have sounded really smart had that happened. Not often I get to say that, so you know, we try to, you know, gotta try to point that out when we have the opportunity, right? Cole with Tyson in the backfield. Tyson Lofton just off to his right. Check that left. Cole takes the snap. Cole hurdles a guy in the backfield. Kind of had someone fall at his feet. He dove forward and picked up about five. We'll call it third and three. Ball is marked at the 47 yard line. Third and four for the Vikings. Forty-seven and ticking down here in the third quarter. Vikings look like they're going to take a fourteen-point lead into half or into the fourth quarter. Sorry. And once again, approaching midfield, out here at the forty-two. Cole takes the snap, looks to run to the near side, finds a hole. He's going to dive ahead for the first down. Ethan Cole from the forty-two out to the forty-six. Give him four. He needed three. Ethan Cole and the Vikes have marched another first down. 
when they reset the chains. This will tick down and finish the third quarter. The Vikes put up the number four. They're a quarter away from po seeing postseason WIAA action. And you can catch it if you stay with us here on WLA TV. Well, we got a chance here. Update you on the week that has been and the week to come in WLA Athletics. Both of the other fall, or all three of the other fall sports finished their regular seasons. Cross Country ran yesterday at Mayville Golf Course for the Flyway Conference meet. Both the boys and the girls finished uh, in fourth place. Bennett Midthin. Uh, on the boys' side, and Ella Borgwart on the girls' side, both first-team all-conference participants. For the soccer team, WLA awarded the four-seed in their sectional. That sets up a matchup with the 13th-seeded Howard's Grove team. That coming next Thursday. Closed out a second-place flyaway conference finish with a 4-1 win over Mayville last night. Volleyball beat Campbell Sport 3-1. They got the eight seed, and they will host Marshall, I do believe it is. That comes up on Tuesday. After they host that one, they'll have to travel to the one seed. I believe is Lake Country Lutheran. So that's to come for WLA Athletics. If the Vikes win here tonight, tomorrow morning, Coach Lair gets to wake up and go to a seating meeting, which you'll take, absolutely. Here's Cole. Trying to run to the near side as the team switch sides of the field. And Cole's going to pick up uh, about a yard. Going to bring up second and nine as the Vikes inch closer and closer to midfield here. It's a little easier to wake up on Saturday morning and Put some work in for your playoff football team, right? Go to the seating meeting and argue your case for your team. Cole back in the backfield. Still flanked by Tyson Lofton. This time Lofton off to his right. Bring Weedmeyer in motion. Fake it to Lofton. Cole's got a huge hole on the near side. Just... Not quite able to step through the tackle, and what a tackle it was by number 11, Turner Wagoner. That was a good one. I think Wagner might have, well, he saved a huge gain. I know Ethan Cole probably doesn't have the, my, you know, the television blurring speed. But he's fast enough to do some damage, and he's big enough in the open field that he is a, Load to take down. Nonetheless, even with the terrific tackle from Wagner, it leaves a third and one. Cole's under center. Usually this means, oh, I think it's Paul moving a little bit early. They want to fly off the ball, but the Vikes, whenever Cole's under center, it's usually a QB sneak, and he had three guys behind him to push him forward. And the false start will move it back to a third and six. That's a big one. Ball sits directly at midfield. Vikings 10 minutes away from snapping what is a three-game losing streak. Played the top three teams in the conference, Campbell, Sport, Mayville, and Springs in consecutive weeks. Here's Cole in the backfield, turns, hands to Lofton. No, oh, it's a great reverse. And getting free is Ebert. Ebert to the far side, turns up the sideline and is dragged out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. What a call by the Vikes. I thought it was to Tyson Lofton. Every Lamira Lion thought it was to Tyson Lofton. And instead it's Brendan Ebert down the far sideline. And they're gonna give him down to the 16 from the 50 that's a 34-yard pickup. 
They're going to give him the 15, so 35 yards, and by far the biggest pickup of the night for the Vikes. Brendan Ebert came out of the slot, might have even been lined up as a tight end, and it was a very, he was lined up as a tight end, kind of like he is right now, came around on a little bit of a jet sweep, and the Vikes well in business down now down in the 15-yard line. There were several Vikes that moved early on that one. And we'll be back down to the 20. 9.48 to go in the ball game. Cole with Lofton off to his left this time. Here comes Weedmeyer in motion. Give his to, no, Cole kept it once again. And Cole is gonna pick up about three, two or three, two and a half probably, yards of the penalty yardage back. Now let's give him two and just call it second and 13. Gensler's down here to the bottom. Ebert's the tight end. Shotgun snap to Cole. Cole's going to run right behind Ebert and pick up uh, about four more yards. I think it's going to end up being a third and nine here. If my eyesight does not deceive me. Yeah, let's call it third and nine. Pick up a four. Two receivers to the top. Ebert also to the top as the tight end. Single coverage if Cole wants it. I think they're just going to keep it on the ground. Once again, it's the same call where Ebert comes around as the tight end and a nice tackle. Trying to see who that is, see if he can turn his back. I think it was Wollersheim, perhaps, who made a nice tackle. Ebert picked up another five. It's fourth and five. Ebert is the leading rusher for the Vikings with 40 yards after a couple of nice plays. Actually, I think that was Ethan Brager who's done the punting duties tonight for Lamira. I believe that's who it was who made that nice tackle. Ethan Cole's still standing on the sideline. I think they're gonna take a timeout. Yep, there's the timeout for the Vikes. We'll take it with them. 7.31 to go here in the fourth quarter. Vikes look there, like they're on their way to the playoffs. End of the ball game. Coming up. Stay with us. Should pull up and see if I can get a score. I believe the closing game for, I, I don't think Mavo was home clear necessarily for the conference. Let's see if I can find a score potentially. It's fourth and sixth, by the way. And Cole's gonna try a field goal. Good snap up, but it's to the near side. I think that's no good. It is no good. Remains, Vikings 14, Lions nothing. 
Yeah, you saw a couple of Lions trot off the field looking like uh, they had stopped it, and that is what they had. So from where that ball was kicked, should be almost the 20-yard line, I think. Yeah, let's call it the 20. So it was a 30-yard field goal attempt. So from their own 20, Lions take over. Steers in the pistol, turns, gives. Wagoner, I believe it is, on the end around, and he's going to pick up about five. Second and five for the Lions. I'm going to keep working on finding a Campbell Sport Mayville score because I do believe that would have bearing on the conference. I don't know what tiebreakers are, but that if, if Campbell Sport would beat them, Springs beat Campbell Sport. If Campbell Sport beat Mayville, Mayville beat Springs, that would be a three-way tie for the conference. Who knows? Maybe they hand out three trophies. Handed out two of them in the spring to Lamira, actually, who was a co-champion in the spring with the Amro Foxes. And at this point, both those teams could potentially be out of the playoffs. There's a gain of four for the Lions. See if we can find a, a Mayville score. We'll work on that. That was a chance for the Vikings. And it's going to be fourth down, fourth down and about two. Fourth and two. Snap taken by Steers. Steers looks to the near side. Got a couple of blocks. They are busting through. And cutting him down was Bubba Kulibert. On senior night, the senior turns the Lions over on downs, and the Viking offense will trot back out onto the field. What a play by the secondary player of the Vikes. One of the team captains. And the Vikes have it inside the 30, 27 yard line. It's where they'll take over. Well, 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 the last score that was updated. Now this is a, according to an app called ScoreStream, who I, I've been led to believe is a pretty credible source. Campbell Sport 18, Mayville 7. Is that right? I'm sure you could find that stream. We'd appreciate it if you kept it here. Watch the Vikings and the Lions. Oh, that's a fumble from Lofton, and it's going to be pushed out rather luckily for the Vikings. Tyson Lofton with a nice carry on the player play and just had it punched out by one of the secondary players of the Lions. Couldn't tell if that was 24 Logan Neitzel or not. 84 was in on the play, Connor Marshall as well. You know, it's the 14 nothing is probably a little harsh on this Lomira Lions defense who has played extremely well all, all game long. They gave up the one long pass, 61-yard touchdown. Otherwise, the Vikings have been stymied offensively. Their other score coming, of course, from the fumble scoop and score. Cole going to bring Weedmeyer in motion. Hand to Lofton, right back to Tyson Lofton go the Vikings. And second and seven, looks like it's going to turn into, no, first down. Nice carry by Lofton. I'm assuming that's why they stopped the clock. Yeah, first down. Got just enough, did Tyson Lofton. Carries of three and seven, and that's good enough for a Viking first down. If we get a, a stoppage here, if we get a, a score or a change of possession, see if I can find a, a YouTube stream to pull up on my phone and, and see if Campbell Sport Mayville, if we can get you a more updated score. That was, that was a 
reported halftime score. Cole in the, sh in the shotgun. Turns, hands. Tyson Lofton dives forward. Lofton's going to gain a couple. Just one. Second and nine. Tick underneath the five minute mark. And we've seen a lot of Ethan Cole here in the second half. Now we see some Tyson Lofton and a couple of guys that are tough to bring down when they really get going. Lofton, 5'11", 215, just a strong, strong frame, Tyson Lofton. And then 6'2", 205 is what Ethan Cole goes. They're a load to bring down when you get them into the open field, that's for sure. We admire once again in motion, up the middle with Tyson Lofton once again. And Lofton, give him a couple more. Going to set up a third and six, third and seven. Somewhere around there for the Vikings. Going to send Sebi Paul in with the play. He'll relay it to Ethan Cole. And the quarterback will... Head into the huddle, set his team up for a third and we'll call it seven up here. Lofton split out as a receiver. One tight end, two receivers to either side. Cole, quarterback draw, and it looks like he's going to pick up one or two. It's going to bring up a fourth and four or a fourth and five. We'll call it fourth and five. and. Lemire is going to take a timeout. We'll take it with him. Keep exploring this Mayville Campbell sport situation. Back with more. You're watching Viking Football on WLA TV. Yeah, the last score that I can find is that 18 to seven score between these two teams in Campbell Sport. And now I've seen it two different places that are saying Campbell Sport 18, Mayville seven. Travis Wilson of wissports.net uh, is also reporting that score of a halftime score. Now again, that's about an hour ago. So how that second, how the second half would have progressed is uh, unknown. But that is, uh, you know, I would trust Travis Wilson of Wisports uh, to be pretty accurate. Here's Cole. Looks to the near side. Caught in the corner of the end zone. Was that? That was not Cole. That was Sam Lair. Sam Lair to the corner of the end zone. That's his, I believe Sam Lair's first, is that his first career touchdown pass? I believe he found Bubba Kulibert in the corner of the end zone. I had to do a double take, and it shouldn't have had to do that. It was a right-handed quarterback. Sam Lair, the sophomore. What a throw, and a nice adjustment in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Nice to see that. Cole will come back on to at least do the 
extra point honors for the Vikings. And up and good for Ethan Cole. 21 nothing. I think you can cue the music again. I had to go check there with the official stat keepers. That was Bubba Kulibert in the corner of the end zone. Nice adjustment by Bubba, who, again, started that possession with the fourth down stop. So on senior night, on parents' night, Bubba with a good memory to leave Viking Field. And Sam Lair, I mean, another one of the talented sophomores. I keep bringing up this sophomore class. You just hope that he, that's the first of many. By the way, the happiest guy on the field was Ethan Cole. When, they, when that pass was caught by Kulibert, Cole was off of the ground, jumped in the air, pump, pumping his arm, and he sprinted out to Sam Lair. Happiest guy in the building. Looked like the Vikes might have been off sides on that kickoff. No flag on the field. Taken back there by the Lions. Oh, big crease. And it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Ethan Cole, last chance to make a touchdown saving tackle, and he does. That was a nice return by Taylor Schaumburg. The freshman darted through a huge hole into positive territory, and the Lions will start at their plus 43. Three minutes and 17 seconds left in the game. Looks like the Vikes might be postseason bound. Team that has nine upperclassmen, a lot of youth on this team. Here's Steers, far side, little overthrown of his intended target, Ethan Brager. Coverage on the play was Noah Gensler. Second and 10. Here's the snap. Steers trying to set up the screen. Caught fingers. Shoestring catch by Neitzel. What a catch it was, but a great shoestring tackle then by Brendan Ebert. Great tackle by Ebert. So it actually is going to lose a yard here for the Lions with that play. And the clock's going to continue to run as we now tick under two minutes and 45 seconds here in the fourth quarter. Great display for them from the Viking defense. And worth noting, you know, Gabe Harmon was running. Oh, there is a great delayed draw. Great design by the Lions. And Neitzel's going to, I believe, pick up the first down. He will give him about 11 yards on the pickup for Logan Neitzel. But Gabe Harmon, the was a you know junior running back, had to leave in the first half. Haven't seen him since. He was running well for the Lions. Got to believe this would have been a little bit of a different game had he been able to stay in. Here's a good looking pass to the far side, caught down inside the five yard line to the two. It's Ethan Brager who went up, contested with Noah Gensler and pulled it down. That was a good looking pass. Going to go for about 30 yards from Steers down to Brager and the Lions. Going to have a chance here. They're going to take a timeout, try to save some time. Two minutes and five seconds left here in the game. Now, 
hey, crazier things have happened in the world of high school football than 21 points in two minutes and five seconds. Don't go anywhere. Don't go searching for that Campbell Sport Mayville game just yet. See what the Lions can put together here as they're down at the three yard line, first and goal. Now, improbable, sure. Especially with that last touchdown pass that Sam Lair threw just moments ago on the south in the south end zone to Bubba Kulabert. Probably gonna have the heavy packages in here for both teams. One receiver for the Lions, couple of tight ends, extra linemen on the field for Steers in the backfield. He's got Knightsel right behind him in the pistol. Send a man in motion. Drop back. They are going to throw the football. Looks to the near side. Steers tipped away. And a nice job by Bubba Kulibert. Got his hand on the pass and knocked it down. You might be saying, you're down at the three-yard line. Why not punch it in? You got to think about the time here. If you are a lion, a Lamira lion, you got to worry about the clock not running. You can't use all your timeouts. Granted, you're in, in dire straits anyway with only one timeout left. Here's Steers. Turns. Fake to Neitzel. Steers leans forward. Touchdown, Lions. They get on the board with one minute and 53 seconds left here in the ball game. Steers able to push through for a three-yard pickup. And the first points of the ball game for the Lions. So Brager will come on to kick or stay on, I should say. He was on as a receiver on that play. So see if he can knock this through for Lamira. And then it's onside kick time. Good snap put down. Brager's kick looks good. Sailing through the night sky, it is good. And it's 21 to seven. So now Vikes got to hop on an onside kick. Finish this thing out the right way in front of your home crowd. Parents night, chance to punch your ticket to the playoffs. Again, with the relatively young team that they've sported this year and they've had to bounce back from, it adver from some adversity. Lost their first game, tough game on the road down at Kettle. But after that, Four or five straight, four straight games, sorry. Chilton, North Fondy, Amro, Laconia. Three of those games coming at home. Won those four games and lucky magic number five. Looks like it is close. It is close. Is there any magic left in the right foot of Ethan Bragger? If there is, Lions need it right now. Weedmeyer is the deepest Viking. Got the hands team out there, so Likes of Gensler and Cole and Lofton and we uh, Kulabert and Huey. And they're going to kick it to the far side. Bounces a couple of times. Off of a Viking. Picked up by a Lion. And stepping through a couple of tackles. I thought he was going to take it, but I'm, can you advance it? I think you can in high school. It got popped into the air, hit a Viking, and I think that's what Coach Lair is wondering. Can you advance that? Because he's, he's asking about it right now. Can you advance the football on an onside kick? I know you can't going up into the NCAA and NFL levels, but I would be remiss if I said I was an expert on 
WIA, each WIAA rule. I mean, this is not something that, this isn't as cut and dry as false start and offsides. I think everyone understands what that is. Can you advance this football? That's the question. I mean, it's the difference in, I mean, you're talking 30 yards. And they all, I, I think there was also a. Penalty on the play. They, I think, I think it's. Yeah, there you go. You just heard that from Mr. Klukas. You cannot advance that. I kind of, when it was happening, I had that in the back of my mind. But, and that's an important rule if you're a, a Viking fan. You can kind of breathe a little sigh of relief. Now, again, you're starting to get a little nervous, right? 21-7. Lions continuing to claw here. There was never an ounce of this game is over in the demeanor of the Lemire Lions tonight. Got to respect that. Here's Steers. Steers drops back to pass. Pivots his hips. Looking to the end zone. Got a man down there. Oh, it's just overthrown. Steers had Wagoner behind the Lemire, or behind the Viking defense and just out in front of him. Well, if you're the Vikings, there's your warning shot. Do the Lions have one of those plays that they can complete here? That's what they need. Get back in, jump right back into this. Wagoner, tell you what, he's been impressive. Turner Wagoner tonight, number 11. Listed as a QB in the program, but has lined up all night at wide receiver for Lemire. Here he comes, jet sweep motion. Give us to Neitzel, breaks a tackle. Now going to run over a Viking safety. I think that was Cole Weedmeyer. It's gonna stop the clock, and Lemire's gotta go, go, go. Give him about 13 on the pickup. Steers checks his wrist. Clock is running under a minute 30. Steers looks to the sideline, takes the snap. Drops back to pass. Pivots. Lofts one over looking for Wagoner. Double coverage, and that one falls to the turf. Not the worst thing in the world, I suppose, for the Vikings, or for the uh, Lions. It at least stops the clock. But they got to pick up another touchdown and they got to do it relatively quickly. I mean, I got to believe if you're the Lions, you get another touchdown, you start you're starting to believe now. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like there was a big scrum for that last onside kick. They they recovered that pretty comfortably. So you start to put some pressure on this team. Here's the pitch. Here's Neitzel. Neitzel's got a cut up field. Great play by Ethan Cole. And a timeout immediately for the Lions. It's going to be third and six. Now it's clearly four down territory for Lamira. So, I mean, first down is obviously priority number one. You turn this over on downs, and the ball game is over. That being said, that 110 is starting to, I mean, that clock just continues to drain. So you got to start taking shots to the end zone, I would think. What an entertaining game. You know, this is not something you look at 21-7, snooze. No, this has been an, an entertaining game from the, from the jump couple of teams scrapping and clawing for what they believe is their only shot at postseason play. And that's the mindset you have to have going into this. I know both these teams could still make it in the postseason with the loss, but you got to go with the mindset. That this is your only shot. And I think we've seen that intensity from both these teams tonight. Here's Steers. Loops it over, tipped away. Nice play by Jacob Huey. Once again, looking for what appears to be his favorite target, Turner Wagner. 
and it's fourth and seven. So again, understandable, you got to get the first down, or do you just take a shot at the end zone? We'll see here. Could be the last meaningful play of action. If this pass falls incomplete or the runner is dragged down less than seven yards, the Vikes are going to take over and the kneel on the football. Here's a pass. Hey, found his guy. First down, Lions. Found Wagner, his favorite target, and Wagner is going to keep this alive. They're going to reset the chains, reset the ball. They're going to wind the clock now. 59 seconds and counting. Quick look over to the sideline. Stamping his foot. Steers. Drops back to pass. Looking to the end zone. Got a man there. Through the hands of Gensler. Tipped around and not caught. Almost pulled in by Colin Wollersheim. Gensler went for the pick. And I thought Wollersheim was going to tip that up to himself. He got his hand on it about four times. And I think we're going to get a Viking time. Yeah, Viking timeout. Catch your breaths at home. Wow. Well, I guess that's why the defensive secondary coaches always tell you to bat the ball down, right? Chance there for the Lions, and Gensler's just got to pound that one into the turf. Noah Gensler has had a terrific game for the Vikings, accounting for 14 of the 21 points for WLA. First half scoop and score. Second half 61 yard touchdown bomb from Ethan Cole and then the scoring completed. I'll tell you what, that Sam Lair touchdown pass is looking more and more important as we continue on. Second and 10 on the way for the Lions from the 15 yard line. Second and 10 Lions from the Vikings, 15 yard line. Steers in the backfield. Two receivers to the top. Drops back to pass. Steers takes a hit while he throws over the shoulder. Opportunity for Ethan Brager. Can't quite locate it. And it falls to the turf. Again, improbable, yes. Impossible, no. Here on this crisp, cool October evening, the Lions' last couple of chances, third and 10 from the 15. Steers takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks to the near side, now goes to the far side, throws the jump ball to Brager, and it's incomplete. I mean, Brager goes 6'3", 220. There's worse guys you can throw a jump ball to than that, that's for sure. Haven't seen Brager pull one down yet, but not a bad idea to target him in the end zone. Last chance now. Just 31 seconds left. Lions got to get it to go and then, again, get an onside kick. That's the formula for them. Steers, takes the snap, rolls near side, throws near side, diving catch for the touchdown. What a play by the Vikings, or by the Lions. It's Kobe Sakat, sophomore to sophomore connection. What a play by number 21, Kobe Sakat. I mean, you can't lay out any further than he did there. And that's what the Lions needed. Brager back on for the extra point. We got a ball game at Viking Field. Brager, got to put this one through to make it a little more comfortable. Jack Karst off the edge. Oh, it's good. 21 to 14. And they've already recovered one onside kick. <laughs> Do the Lions have another in them? Wow. 
This for what hasn't this fourth quarter had? We've had a couple of Lamira touchdowns. We've had a touchdown thrown by the backup WLA quarterback. We've had an onside kick recovery. Wow. I hope that I hope the I hope the camera did Kobe Sakat justice or Sakot. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I hope that did did that young man some justice. He was completely laid out, and he pulled it in, hung on, survived everything you talk about in the pros, survived the ground. Oh, what a play. And you got to give a ton of credit to number tw number 12, Connor Steers, the sophomore quarterback, who has taken a couple of hits. He's seen a lot. The majority of his passes hit the turf incomplete. Stood in there and just keep just kept going. So it all comes down to this. Ball game on the line. 24 seconds left. Vikings know the Lions are out of timeouts. This will do it. Ethan Brager going up. Onside kick attempt. He's going for far side. Was he out of bounds? No signal just yet. Just heard a... WLA coach yell he was off sides. Was the recovery made in bounds? I think a Lamira Lion ended up with it. Was he in bounds? This is a huge call. Man. Can you wait any longer? Looks like they're sending the ball off the field, which would indicate that it's Viking football. And that's gonna all but do it. Yeah, they're throwing the Viking football out there. So recovery was made, it looks like, by the Lions on the far side, but sliding out of bounds, it is Viking football. There's confirmation from the referee. Vikes just going to kneel down a couple of, well, just once is all that's needed. One clean snap. Well, this game's had it all. Just get the ball into Ethan Cole's hands. Let a knee hit the turf. And wow. I hope you enjoyed that at home as much as I did up here in the booth. Both of these teams left it all out there. I mean, this is as good as high school football gets right here as far as I'm concerned. Vikings survive at the end. 21-14, Vikes win. And you can cue the celebration music now for the Vikes. They've qualified for the 2021 WIAA Fall Playoffs. And congratulations to the Lions if they don't see postseason action. I mean, this is a deserving team. If they should get an opportunity to represent the Flyway Conference in the postseason, well deserved. Couple of nice plays down the stretch by the Lions, not quite enough. They dropped the final regular season game 21 to 14. Lions will finish this season five and four and three and four in, pardon me, four and five four and five, and three and four in the Flyway Conference. The Vikings will finish this season five and four, four and three in the conference, and again, as I mentioned a couple of times already, qualify automatically for the WIAA playoffs. So congratulations to the Vikings, congratulations to the Lions on a spectacular season. Both of these teams find themselves in a similar spot in the conference. But congratulations to the Vikings, uh, especially the seniors. There's five of them. Uh, we highlighted them to start tonight. Ethan Cole, K Bubba Kulabert, Tyson Lofton, Jacob Huey, Lucas Weigand. Just five seniors for this team, and they'll circle up with their student section with the fans for the alma mater. 
and get ready to close this thing down. Their last opportunity to play here at Viking Field. You know, they're going to go to the playoffs. They're probably going to draw one of the higher seeds. They're going to have to go play on the road. They're gonna, it's going to be a difficult game for the Vikings. You know, but this is a team that uh, fought all season long, battled to a 4-1 and one start, knowing that the next three games were going to be difficult, took it on the chin, 28-7, 35-7, 56-14, no give up. They knew it was going to come down to one game at the end of the season, uh, and they left it out winning 14, 21 to 14 over the Lemire Lions. Scores tonight, a couple of scores for Noah Gensler, the sophomore wide receiver and cornerback. One was a scoop and score on the defensive side. One was a 61 yard reception from quarterback Ethan Cole. Then we saw sophomore quarterback Sam Lair find Bubba Kulibert for <laughs> who to thunk? Game winning touchdown pass was thrown by S Sam Lair. Tell me if you had that one pregame. Just a fun night. Appreciate you tuning in. If you couldn't be here at Viking Field, I hope this was a close second uh, and uh, really, really do appreciate you joining us. Um, we'll have everything on WLA TV. Any home event we try to bring you. On Tuesday, we'll have playoff volleyball. Vikings, the eight seed, we'll have that on Tuesday. Then we're not far away. We're only a month or so away from bringing you basketball. It's basketball season. A couple of great teams with great prospective years this coming winter for WLA and looking forward to that. Appreciate you tuning in. Final score here from Viking Field, the Lemire Lions 14. The WLA Vikings, 21. WLA qualifies for the playoffs. Tomorrow morning, they'll figure out who they play. You've been watching and listening to Viking Football on WLA TV. Happy Friday night.